So why study artwork? How does knowing the context, histories, and traditions of art forms help us create works of art and design as well as appreciate them? First, it helps us understand the context of events in time. Artists often reflect the problems that they face and the issues of the society in their work. By analyzing and putting ourselves in the mind of the artist, we can better study how differently society functioned then compared to now. We can empathize and relate to the problems they faced on a personal level. For example, this Roy Lichtenstein Wham 1963 creepily stylizes a version of an air battle that was painted during the Vietnam War. Second, art encourages viewers to talk and interpret what they observe. Art appreciation helps open our minds by listening to different perspectives and views, as well as interpretations of the art. Art observation encourages thoughtful conversation and the understanding that there is more than one approach to everything. For example, this painting by Norman Rockwell shows a young black girl named Ruby Bridges walking down the road on her way to attend an all-white school. She is flanked by security due to the racial hatred this incited. She walks past racial slurs written on the walls. Artworks have the power to make a powerful statement and bridge courageous conversations. Art encourages us to have a relationship with what we are viewing. For many people, art is meant to express something that we ourselves feel unable to express. Through its visual medium, it evokes feelings of joy, sadness, anger, and pain. That is why art appreciation is so important in bringing that one final element to complete the work, and that is our interpretation. Our perspective brings the artwork to life as it changes for every person around it. For example, this is a detail of Thomas Hart Benton's mural in the Harry S. Truman Library in Independence, Missouri. It's one of the first artworks that I remember as a kid really having an impact on me. I remember standing there and looking at it and wondering, how it had been made and I felt as though I could feel by the expressions on the people's faces exactly how they must have felt at that time. So let's go back to number one. Often when we're studying artwork we'll put it into an art timeline. This helps us to compare it with what other artists were doing in the world at that time as well as what was going on in our society at that time. Within the timeline, we categorize art by periods, movements, and styles. These all basically refer just to a chunk of time in history. So what is the difference between an art period and an art movement? Art periods are bigger chunks of time based on historical eras. They are not necessarily assigned by the artist themselves, but by historians who group like attributes. They are assigned after the fact. Art movements are formed by artists with a set goal in mind. They might share a similar technical approach or time frame. The difference between the two is time and intent. Here's where it can get a little bit tricky. Art movements can be broken into smaller art movements. For example, modernism is an art movement. But within the time period of modernism, several other smaller movements also branched off. Expressionism, pop art, cubism, surrealism, and impressionism were all smaller time periods within modernism. Over the course of this semester, we will look at a variety of artists' work and create our own timelines where we include factual research about the artists and their work. These entries will correspond with what we're learning in class as far as projects. We will also learn how to critique artists and your peers' artwork in a way that builds our observation skills and communication skills. And last, we'll begin figuring out what type of art you connect with. Maybe you haven't looked at much art. Maybe you haven't ever learned how to really interpret and look deeper into an artwork. We're going to explore what work speaks to you. What artwork sticks with you in a way that is unique? 